the AZ is SVO Jokes aside, the realest when you hear it Coming from the Eric Bernard show is Scottsdale Very young, get your phone in, here a we To another episode of the Eric Bernard show Austin Takeover style It's been amazing here in Austin And my guest is Eli Halpern Eli Halpern, also known as Octavius Thunder, a.k.a. he beat up Sean Strickland. And that's the story I'm sticking to. No, he did it, and for uh, legal reasons, we have to say that. But, Eli, um, we met, you know, a couple years ago now. Well, no, we met through the internet a couple years ago, and then we met in real life last year, and then you've been a figment in my imagination ever since. Everything. If I was a white, strong man, I always thought it would be like you. I, I feel the same. If I was a smaller brown man, I'd want to be like you. That means a lot coming from you. Uh, no, but we're here at the Faust House, Faust Media. Shout out to Faust Media Productions. Shout out to Nether Hour. Shout out to Sunset Strip, only because it's behind him. Uh, and we love everyone that books us and pays us. No, dude, Austin, Texas is always a good time. We like to film these things at the end of the weekend. Uh, you'll be getting this about a week, uh, week or two after we've been at uh, Austin. But... Eli is going to be making his way out to Arizona. He doesn't know that yet, but we are getting him booked out there uh, in the Scottsdale, Phoenix, Mesa, Chandler, Tempe, Desert Ridge area. We don't know yet. But Eli, I don't think we really got to know you last time. You know, you were, you had to go do a set, I think, on shrooms. I was in a rush. I don't remember what the deal was, but I had to get out of here. I think I had like 20 minutes. And uh, you had a set. I don't remember, man. No, but, I uh, do remember. So. I watched the episode a few times. A lot of people like that episode. And more, actually, it's gotten like double the views since last time. Like, I posted a clip of us, and like double the people saw it again. I don't, I don't know if there was. Oh, something. the one with Gary having sex on my unconscious body. Yeah, let's talk about that for a little bit. I was like, I shouldn't repost that. But no, hey, no, whatever. no, no, I wouldn't do it. But if you did, you know, who cares? No, it's it's up. It's on my Instagram currently. <laughs> yes, you you requested me. Yeah, but you could deny it. A lot of women do. Well, I um, mean, I was I was asleep, so I literally nothing. I did nothing. No, you're like the innocent one in that whole clip, <laughs> and Gary's like, you know, he's I was he's doing something <laughs> on top of you. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Question: uh, Do you think being good looking and tall and white? has held you back in the comedy scene. Yeah. Why is that? I've, I've had a lot of comedians tell me that. I've had comedians say, you're not going to make it in comedy because your life's awesome. Hmm. And uh, I've had people say I'm too good looking to do comedy, which is interesting because like I'm, I get told I'm good looking all the time, yeah. but like exclusively by other male comedians. Like I'm, I'm good looking enough to where like guys think that their girlfriends all want to fuck me, but I'm not good looking enough to where they actually do. Yeah. So I'm in this like little middle ground where like guys, guys think I'm more attractive than girls do. Do you think it actually is holding you back? Well, in some capacity, I can't think of anything else that would be holding me back. No, because you are funny. I mean, look, guys, uh, go hit up uh, Octavius Thunder on his Instagram. Uh, we'll definitely go. He'll be clipped on our uh, tagging all these clips. But no, like you are funny. Like I would never bullshit you. Uh, go on his YouTube. Uh, is it Octavius Thunder on the YouTube? Yeah. So Octavius Thunder on the YouTube. And I think it's Cricket Lord MMA on the TikTok. Uh, it's Octavius Thunder everywhere. Oh, Octavius Thunder everywhere. Okay, so but yeah, I mean, I I hold my ba myself back a bit as well because I have so much stuff going on that if uh, if comedy's not going well, then I don't really hold myself accountable to be going to mics and stuff. I think what happens is some people think like this isn't your end all do all, so they'll probably think like you don't need this. Yeah, I get a lot of that as well. I feel that vibe. I used to get that a lot too, you know, because I used to have a really good paying job. Uh, you know, I was in banking, you know, had a Series 6, Series 63 licenses, investments. And uh, not that I made a lot of, whole lot of money in comparison to people I know, but it was enough to buy a house, brand new car, take trips, whatever. And in the comedy world in Arizona, I kind of got the same thing where people were like, you don't need this. Yeah, you should be homeless. 
Yeah, you don't need. You what should, do you do in comedy when you don't sleep on someone's couch? I would come to open mic in a BMW, and they were just like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" You know, like what what is the point? So I get that too, but I think talent at the end of the day speaks for it all, and you got it, man. Like you really do. I encourage everyone to go look at his clips. They're fucking hilarious. Your takes on things. I like people who are undoubtedly their, themselves, and you and Gary are those people. Yeah, you know it's it's funny. A lot of people say that. Uh I'm I'm very much myself, but I feel like deep down I'm like 11 people that are all cartoon characters. No, likewise. I mean, I, I think we all like we're, we're all pulling from some type of thing, right? Because that's something I wanted to talk to you about. Like, do you think we're we are ourselves or we're just a com combination of everything we wanted to be? I think about that a lot, actually. I actually what sparked that thought recently. I was. I think Britney Spears came on my Spotify doesn't matter why. That's crazy. But I was though. thinking how she was like my first celebrity crush. She was awesome. And I was thinking why Is it was I, she, like I'm attracted to like blonde girls and, and that kind of look like that now. Is that because of Britney Spears or is it because Britney Spears was pushed on me? Because I remember True. being a little kid and walking by and seeing her album cover with like her titties out and, and like a shiny, a shiny... I don't know like what bralette you call it. thing whatever and she's asking people to hit her on her first album I don't remember that baby hit me one more time oh yeah you ever yeah. think about it she's actively asking people for domestic yeah, she's violence promoting uh toxic relationships I also thought about her other song she does go on record saying that she's a slave so are blonde chicks with big tits really even hot or did the media just create that I think so too because when it comes down to it, my type is kind of like a uh, just I like a a girl who's hot to me, which is like I like Irish looking girls. I like I like the uh, I, I I like the Rose McGowan kind of paleish. I like girls who don't think like they have to get a fake tan to look hot. I like maybe it's I like girls who are themselves and they don't have to get their eyebrows in a certain way or their tits in a certain way, and that, that's not for me. Like, Britney Spears is hot and great, but I like Christina Aguilera more. Maybe because she's Ecuadorian. Her dad's Ecuadorian and abandoned her, just like me. And maybe I thought there was, like, a connection there. And But on all actuality, if I look at the girls I thought were hot growing up, because I'm a few years older than you, it was, uh, but we same women. You know, I thought Alicia Keys was really hot. I thought Gwen Stefani was really hot. I thought Natalie Portman was really hot. I thought uh, Christina Aguilera was really hot. But I liked girls with, like, small boobies, big butt. That's always been my frame. Okay, well, since you said that, I'm going to say that it's in our DNA. Because it's you be. are a South American man. Yes. Makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. That, uh, But you grew up in America. I grew up, I was born in So you in had the Sleepy same Hollywood brainwashing I did. But you stuck to yeah. your roots and you, you still go with the ass. Yeah, I st oh, 100%. I never liked this whole, like... See, uh, I'm more of a tit man. I'm going to tell you why that's the right answer. White. Because dudes have asses and kids have asses. So if you don't prefer tits, you're a gay pedophile. Not that you don't prefer them. I do like women with tits. I just don't like fake tits. I think that's what it was. In the 90s, there was this promotion of like fake, fake. And it was almost like grotesque after a certain while. Because no one even has tits like that anymore. No one even comes close to having boobs. I mean, there are some who still have those. Not my preference. Not my like. Yeah, when they like defy gravity. Yeah, when it just looks like two perfect circles that are drawn on someone. I've tried to enact a no fake tit policy. Has, it's hard. Some doctors it are really worked. good. Some doctors are really good. And also not all of them look bad. I just like. It's a, more the thought process. I like a girl who believes in herself. In a sense where they're like, I don't need to do this. But if you need to do it, great. I mean, I've had this conversation before countless times of if you absolutely, if there's something in you that feels like you need to do it because of whatever they may look like. And if you could fix a part of you, then great. But if it's because everyone else is doing it, to me, I don't like a girl like that. I mean, it's kind of hard to think for yourself at any capacity. A hundred percent. A hundred percent because you're always told being manipulated. To think about everything, yeah. Always and always. But that's why I think, like, you, you, at some point, some people break out of that, though. Like, I feel like you have broken out of... I feel like if I asked you to do something, like, let's go do something, and you did not want to do it, you would tell me, I'm not doing that. Isn't that what anyone would do? No. A lot of people would say yes. So I used to say yes, like, oh, we're all going to have dinner here tonight. But I'm like, uh, okay. All right. I used to do that a lot. Now I don't do that anymore. I don't do anything I don't want to do anymore. 
I can't imagine doing something I didn't want to do. But that's the thing. And not a lot of people are like that. A lot of people will go with the crowd or like if they say, hey, we're not all talking to this one person anymore. Some people will be like, okay. But I need to have a reason why not to talk to a person. There has to be some type of legitimate reason. I've never been in that situation. But they've told you like, yo, don't talk to this guy. Don't talk to this girl. No. Because they're bad for you in the MMA world. No one has ever told me to do anything. I think also they already know not to tell you. Probably. Could be that. I don't know. I <clears throat> I kind of just do whatever I want all the time. Well, I think you probably got that really early on in life. Earlier yeah, than most yeah. people. As long as I can remember. Yeah, I was like the leader-ish in high school. I was, it was like a co-captain team. And we would kind of side with one guy every now and then. And then it would be me 30% of the time. And then I think college really made me go like, no, this is stupid. I need to be the guy. I need to be the dude. Not that I need to be the dude for everyone else. I need to be that guy for myself. And, you know, like even like drinking. Drinking has been something that go, almost goes hand in hand with conversation now. Like you can't do anything without drinking. Everything is for drinks. Let's go out for drinks. You know, I've been sober now. Um, you know, when this is out, it would be over seven months. And good job. Yeah, man. Honestly, man, I... I a lot of people don't even know this, but the day I, f I wanted to go sober, I was driving, I was hungry, I w and I saw a Subway sandwich shop, whatever. And I pulled over, and I went to go. I was looking from outside, looking in. I'm like, what am I going to get? And I just started to cry. I just, like, I had a lot of things held inside. I think a lot of things, you know, in my personal life that's going on, and I was masking it with alcohol. Alcohol was always pushing it out another day, and every morning I'd wake up, I'd go to a local bar that they knew me, they already knew to get me, like, a Bloody Mary and everything, and I was also out of shape, you know, I used to be in really good shape, and I hated to say every time I used to be in good shape, or I used to do that, like... Being a fat guy, you gotta guy. keep going up. You can't, yeah. you can't ever, ever look back. Because there be is like, no, this was better. Yeah, when there I was is younger. no like I made it. I, I think in anything, it's a constant progression. And I had a long bout with alcohol. Like I, uh, my childhood sucked. I, I don't think I experienced happiness until I was nineteen years old. Yeah, that's real. Which, and that's when I started drinking, and then I started having so much fun doing all these alcohols and drugs and it may have d damn well been and, and fun so, uh, well i didn't get into drugs immediately but the the whole time i was drinking i was having so much fun that you know over the years i, I drank every day for seven years yeah that by the end of that seven years it was like well all of the good things in my life have happened while i was drinking mm -hmm. and all of the bad things happened while i was sober so i had to manually shift the course of my life and cut out the alcohol and then go try to have fun sober, which is fucking hard. Yeah. Because Doug Stanhope has a joke about it. He's like, well, people say I don't need drugs to have a good time. That means you need to have a good time to have a good time. And that's completely true. 100%. Cause if I'm going to go out and, and party and hang out till 2 AM sober, which I do all the time. Yeah. And people are like, how do you do that? Like, I'm so impressive. What, it's because I had a good day. I had a great day. Mm. I can't have a bad day and then go out sober. Correct. So, yeah. But if I'm already having a good day, like I, I, I pretty much boil everything down to um, making it about the the body because this dimension is all about the what you can measure. And mm -hmm. yes, like the spirit realm is real and stuff, but you can't be focused on that all the time. You need to focus no. on your body. You need to focus on reality. And that's, you know, just basic shit like sleeping and eating well and being hydrated and exercising and all that stuff. And just realizing that sobriety, the mind is infinite. You can go and worry about problems for longer than you have a time span of your life. You know, like you can, the mind, is, it doesn't end. Never. But the body is finite. So focusing on the body, especially in times of, if, if you're upset about something, instead of trying to make this whole thing in your head, like, oh, I'm mad because this happened, and then if this happens, then this will happen, this whole chain of events in your head, you realize it's none of that's real. Mm -hmm. And just taking a step back and be like, you know what? I'm, I'm hungry. I didn't sleep enough. Mm -hmm. I need some water. 100%. I need to work out. That's literally as simple as that. Make 
made sobriety so much easier. Just making everything about my physical health. 100%. I think a lot, you know, my aunt used to tell me that, you know, if I'm feeling sad or something, have I done three things? Have I seen the sun? Have I worked out for 30 minutes? And have I drank water? Do that for a week and, and come back to me and tell me that you're still uh, sad or depressed or whatever. And being sad is a regular thing, but being depressed, I think people use that word and they throw it around kind of like, I'm depressed because I haven't eaten yet, or I'm depressed because I, I think depression is a real clinical thing, and being sad is normal. It's a normal feeling. If, if, if something happens to your family member, your dog, that's a normal feeling to be upset, to be sad. Well, I mean, depression is a pretty normal reaction to the state of the world. Yeah. Like it's when if, when someone is struggling mentally, I'm like yeah, that makes sense. But I think depression is what you make it to be sometimes, right? Because people obviously fight and they and they and well, they get themselves just being through sad it. Sad for more than one day or longer than what you should have been, right? It's like it's it's delayed. Theo Vaughn had this guy um, on, I forget what his name is, but he was like, what if I told you that trauma has an expiration date and that you cannot keep going back to it and saying that this is the reason why and this is the reason why? And what if I also said that you could also do that too? It was just, It's just completely a choice what you'd like to do. And some people look at it, some people find whatever happened to them as their identity. Like, I was a victim of this. I was forever. And... Yes, that both could still be true. You could use that as like your power to be better, but you could also use that as the reason why you're never getting better. You know, like I think a lot of people fall into that. And I'm I used to fall into that. And I'm no longer do that. I don't say because I'm whatever, I'm short, I'm brown, I'm this, I'm that, my you know, single mom uh household, that it is impossible for me to find some type of financial prosperity. I think that's all bullshit. I think like you have to at some point, it's all you. It is all you. And it, yes, to people who are depressed, people who are sad, they hear that and they'll be like, that's kind of an asshole way to go about it. But that's also a real thing to go about it. It's, it's just honest. Like, I, I don't do jujitsu. I do want to do it. And I will talk to you about that. But there's something about doing something hard and completing it, whether it be Stairmaster, going for a jog or... That's why crawfish is so good. Crawfish. Talk to me about crawfish. Well, you got to... You got to rip them apart. It takes effort. You oh, got to yeah. really dig in there. And that's and why pistachios. Some, some people, too. And some people, Have you ever had the pistachios, just the nut without the peeling it? They're not that good. No. It's the work that it takes to get the meat. That's like, yeah, is what makes you're it absolutely taste right. Good. It's what makes it good. That's why when people are like, hey, can you uh, crack the whatever the crab legs for me for me? Uh, or just uh, it. I think that's the whole process of doing it does make that's a good. It's a good example. Never thought about it like that. It's like I think it's the same thing about having sex. Like, it's easy to pay a girl to have sex and her crawfish comes out or whatever. You know what I mean? Rather than there being some work. Are you saying you got, like, it's better to, like, really put on a performance than just come immediately? Yeah, or, or like. I disagree. Or, or like, there's something <laughs> about uh, a girl fucking you because she wants to. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think that's related at all. Well, no, <laughs> like, what I'm saying is I just thought about cracking something and I just thought about a woman. But, uh, no, like. Effort is what I'm saying. Effort makes something more pleasurable. If you if it took you effort to get something, it's more pleasurable. If it took you effort to get money, it makes it better than if I just handed you money. Handy money is yeah. great, but when someone hands you money, typically you'll just do shit with it. And testosterone makes effort more pleasurable. How's that? That's just an effect of testosterone. Oh. We were talking about uh, and, and alcohol. So the, the, the whole, that's like kind of summarizes being a man. Yeah. Just being a man, you got to fucking do stuff. You got to make things. You got to make shit happen. Yeah, it's not It's not by accident that most men that are depressed are out of shape. Most. Not saying all, but most. A another issue I have with that whole line of thinking is everyone's depressed at yeah. some point. All, all, any emotion you can name, we all feel the same 100%, emotions. 100%. But some people, it's a daily one that they wake up with. Do you know what I mean? It's a daily one where... It's tied to so many things because being out of shape for a man mean, means being less desirable to the marketplace of dating. So you may not experience this because you're a good looking dude. Women like you. And that's something that maybe has even become something that's it doesn't matter anymore. Where there's guys out there that legitimately don't haven't had sex in years 
and they're just not good in that way. And I bet you if they were to just do simple things like work out, become better, wait, have a better quality of sleep, better quality of life, that they, those things do lead to having a relationship because you believed in yourself. Now a woman could do the same. Yeah, it, it starts. It definitely starts with you being becoming who you want to be seen as. Yeah. Because if you sure you can try to bullshit people. But it, it's hard. You can't bullshit yourself. Yeah, exactly. You, if, if you bullshit other people and you're not being true to yourself, then that's going to crumble and, like, fuck you over. You go to sleep with it. You wake up with it. It's not good. We were talking that, about... That's why I'm so adamant about, like, doing all the shit that I do because it's like... Yeah, you even told me, like, without this, I can't... Like, you know what works for you about work, working out, getting a session in, drinking water having coffee or whatever it may be your your things that make you happy these pleasure things but your things seem to be things that are difficult which is what i like to do right things that are difficult like performing like running a business like any of those things so because when you do succeed it means great because most of the time you'll fail along the way i think that's something big that everybody uh, especially men need to do more often is take risks and, and do something because with risks you learn and then you'll hopefully that set something like a fire on your ass and be like, all right, look, it almost worked. I don't really think of it as taking risks. I don't take risks just to take risks. I I take risks. Well, doing a business <laughs> is taking risks. <laughs> or you take risks like. Uh, I just I do things that no will make me feel good about myself and they happen to involve risk. It's not like risk is the goal, but it, they, they work hand in hand. But it, it is an integral part. I'm just framing the perspective of it. Because recently, I, I reshifted my perspective to where, essentially, I'm just like, I'm just giving up on everything, which sounds bad. And I yeah. say it like that on purpose because I think it's funny to phrase things in a way that confuse people. Mm -hmm. Like, when I say I'm going to relapse, it's like, well, you know, it's not like I'm going to throw my life away. No, 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 no. It sounds like that. But I, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to give up on everything. Like, I'm going to stop having pressure on myself to accomplish goals, which... Leaves my day-to-day -day the exact same. I'm still doing the exact same shit as when I had goals, except I just don't put pressure on myself anymore. Yeah, no, I also, again... It goes but I don't think that's <clears throat> the best way to live either. Because I think I, I could be more successful if I put more pressure on myself and sacrifice more. But I don't really want to do that. I like how my life is right now. Mm -hmm. And sure, I could cut out all socialization and make a lot more money. But I don't think that that would make me feel No, because good. then... Because it would take me so much money to elevate my lifestyle at all. I already have like a pretty decent lifestyle. With, I like I have a house yeah. and a car and I, I eat whatever I want. It would take a lot of money to get more than that. Yeah, no. And the thing is like money doesn't necessarily equal happiness. You know, they're just people out there who who are good with what they got. And, and like, I mean, they, money definitely equals happiness. It, de it definitely helps happiness, but it could also. No, you cannot be happy without money. No, it's no. It's impossible. People. Maybe not money the way you have it. Maybe money where it's just, we're good. We do two vacations a year with the family. I work every week. We're all straight. Where you're like, that to me is nothing. No, I want to take that's good. 20 vacations a year. But you what need I'm enough money to afford above, a, a, above a poverty place level and food. And I, so basically, the, I the, mean, if you have a family, the top 30 percentile to be kind of financially happy, would you be, would you think that? Because top 10 percent is a uh, what? 80 grand and above, 100 grand and above of the country? I doubt that. Top uh, 10. You think, you think, yeah, top 10 probably. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Top 30%. I think anyone could be happy with like 50, 80 grand a year. Yeah. And any single person that doesn't have 100%. Any, any serious passions like skiing or boating. And they have like, they, they do exactly what they want to do. But I had a conversation with my dad about this and he was, he was giving me shit, and he was like, you, you're you putting this message out, like, you need money to be happy, and, and you don't. I used to know this guy who lived in a one-bedroom apartment with his kids, and he was very talented in New York, and he was he could have made a lot more money, and instead he chose to stay in New York with his kids and live with his kids and be a good dad. And I was like, and how much did that one bedroom in New York City cost? Yeah, like a, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. So you need money to be happy. You need I'm money. Not saying, and he's like, no, but you, you're saying it like you need millions of dollars. And I'm like, I've never said that. I've never once said that. But you need money. Yes. I guess you need an income. There needs to be a source where it's coming in 
weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, daily, whatever it is. No, I'm not, I'm not going to argue with that either, especially with today. Like everything is 100 percent just going up every day. That's why I'm happy I bought my house eight years ago. It was the smartest thing I ever did. And I didn't even really want to do it, which is a funny thing. I didn't want to buy a house, but I qualified. I had money in the bank. It almost was like it led me to this point. My credit was good. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. I mean, the thing is that you don't know what you're doing for today. That's going to, you know, how it's going to rank in importance in your life, you know, five, 10 years from now. So you do it for those times. And now I work, I think about my friends who like, you know, in Scottsdale, Arizona, they're paying, you know, 2,500, 3K for a one bedroom, you know, which is ridiculous. And I pay less than half of that for my mortgage, you know, like way less than half of that, probably 35% of that. And it's just smart. Like, you don't have to make money if you're smart, too. Like, you don't have to make as much money. There you go. Maybe that's a better pre uh, preface. Because if my if your mortgage is $800, $900, $900, you could pay that working at In-N-Out. Whose fucking mortgage is $900? I'm close to it. Bought my house uh, eight years ago. Just put it like this. My house now is two and a half times worth than what it was when I bought it. And uh, it, I, you know, maybe stepped on shit. That's fine. That's kind of been the, the, the story of my life. Really, I've always connected, uh, done something right time. Maybe I thought it was too late in life. Like I bought it at twenty nine years old, twenty eight. No, no, no. So I bought it. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Cause I'm turning thirty seven. Yeah, dude. Pretty much every successful financial decision I've ever made in my life has just been going with my gut on a whim. Yeah, it's just like that. Whenever I start doing like technical analysis and looking at charts and stuff, it like it throws it off. But when I just blindly throw darts at a chalkboard or whatever, that's like sports is, betting. I think the more uh, the the more research you do, the more fucked up your your sports bets are. I yeah. think like people I've seen like girls just go like blue team, boom, they're gonna win, and then they win. It's because they're just le you're you're tying less to to calculations rather than just like what feels good. And not saying it's going to hit every time, but I've seen it. I've called my nephew up or down for the for the over or under. And he'd be like, up. I'm like, okay, boom, up or down, down. And I hit a parlay off of him. Just just going blindly, like, with no feelings attached to it. Just going, yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, and this is what I'm going to do. I think it's, uh, I mean, it does work sometimes, doesn't work sometimes. But I would say when I bought my house, you know how some people go 10 different houses. And maybe didn't. I literally saw a house. I go, that one. Okay, what, what offer should we put in? That one? Okay, let's do it. I just knew that this is good. This is fine. I don't need to look at other things because I think you talked about this. The more choices you have, the more less, less likely you have, more less likely to make a decision. So I only really looked at two houses while I was buying a house. And the one house that I did want, I couldn't get it. And then there was a house literally identical with an extra bedroom uh, 50 feet away, basically, from that house. And I said, okay, that one then. Okay, cool. And then they got it, and that was mine. I didn't but, realize we were going to be talking about real estate. Yeah, dude. So I had sex in all the brooms, which is good. No, I haven't. I don't think so, have I? I don't know. But I do want to talk to you about alcohol because we're talking about sobriety, alcohol, and how I've been off of it. I feel better. I, I sleep better. Uh, obviously, I've lost weight. I've just implemented the gym maybe two or three months after I stopped drinking. Uh, I'll be honest with you, dick is getting super hard all the time. I'm uh, I'm at full full salute every morning, which I wasn't having when I was drinking and doing drugs. That's interesting. That's a good reason to stop drinking right there. Just that. And then I heard that it promotes like uh, estrogen when you drink. Yeah, I heard you saying that. I don't know. Probably. Well, it gives you man tits. It, th there's a bunch of stuff going on. I mean, it's I'm pretty sure you could find a study to support anything you want to say about alcohol because the next day, whatever negative thing you're trying to prove is pretty easy to support. It's essentially you're just, you're poison, though. Hangover. Yeah, dude. But drinking is essentially poison. Yeah, I mean, if you drink enough of it, you will die. That's that's def the definition of poison. If you have enough of something... Like women? No. Women... You know, it's funny. Uh, they banned Pornhub. In Texas. And there's all this stuff online, like how porn's evil and it's bad for you and stop watching porn. And I'm like, dude, you know what's way more dangerous than jerking off to porn? Having sex with real women. Yeah. That's so much worse. I agree. 
I would advise the younger generation to sit home and jerk off over trying to have sex with women. I think less partners, the better. I, the, I, I, pretty much every guy I know is having some kind of issue with women right now. Yeah, I mean, because what happens is I think it, it pulls on a string that no other man's going to pull on. It just pulls on a string of... It's it can, called a dick. Yeah, that, and it's become, you could become insane. You know, you could literally, someone can drive you nuts because here comes someone who, who provokes as much animosity and anger out of you as any man could, but, but you, you can't, can't hit him. Yeah. <laughs> you can't hit him. And then that's, that, that lies that, that whole thing because they're also on the other end, super lovely, super dope. And then you got to have to bounce, uh, you know, recalculate what's going to work and what isn't. Like, I want, uh, you know, this is something that I've been promoting lately, but I want to be with one girl. I just want to be, like, the the catastrophe of just being with multiple women is honestly a death sentence to some men, and it will be at some point fuck with you and end you. I mean, just look at anyone. I think the less people that you're connected with, the better. Yeah, in your 20s, it's you, you asked me this question you know, a couple of years ago, I'll, t I'll give you a different answer, but I've also gone through it and I just don't see it as appealing anymore. And I think maybe to some guys, they go, yeah, whatever. That's why you've had sex with like a hundred girls. It's easy for you to say, but it's like, yeah, but I had to do that in order to get here to this, to this, uh, whatever, this answer in my head that I'm just happier. Like if I don't have to worry about multiple women, cause that's what we do as men. It's kind of either worry or they take some type of space in our mind. Well, so Quitting drinking helped my dating life considerably. That's actually. good. Me too. Well, there was, there was a, a weird, like, it went down and then up. Because, like, when I first stopped drinking, this was, like, four years ago when I really decided to stop drinking. It was, like, three or four years ago. I've relapsed a bunch since then. But when, when I decided, I was like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. The first three months uh, of sobriety, I was, like, how did I ever get laid? Every mm. time, I don't know if you've ever tried talking to a woman sober, but it is brutal. Sober, sober sex is weird. Yeah, that too. But unless I you love even, them, when I was sober, I was like, I can't even imagine. Like, I don't even know how to get to that point. Mm. I, I like, I just, I like reverted. I like reverted to the age that I started drinking at. I was like an eighteen-year-old again, and I was like, I don't know how to talk to people. It's nerve-wracking. So then, I mean, I started doing mushrooms, which, you know, swap one addiction. Yeah, yeah, another. yeah, yeah. And then I would, I, would, I would take mushrooms, and I would, like, kind of make it like an exercise. Like, let's, out, let's see how long I can hang out and, like, talk to people. Mm -hmm. And then I got in the groove of that, and then next thing you know, I'm addicted to mushrooms. I was doing, like, <laughs> I was doing, like, five grams a day for, like, two years. How was it, though? Amazing. It was the best. <laughs> do dude. you, uh, I mean, everyone's different, but do you think five grams is enough for someone to go nuts? Absolutely. For sure. Five grams. I've never, I don't think I've ever done that. Oh, much. yeah. That's, I don't know uh, what I've done. But I, I, I mean, I can I would count wake on one up, hand. I would, every, I would take mushrooms every night. I would have the best night ever. I would be like, fucking, I'm connected to God and I'm God and we're all God. And mm -hmm. we're just, <laughs> we're just like, we're just on this wild ride through life all together and we're all doing it. We're together. And I, I just felt so much love and gratitude in my heart. And then the next day, I would have like three hours with nothing to do. And I'd be like, I should kill myself. Ah, because all that God connection stuff. I'm like, dude, I know what happens after you die. So it's like not even a big deal. What you're if like, I just... you're like, OK with it. Yeah, dude. What if I just go back to the motherland? And I mean, I still th there was like some sprinkles of depression in that, too. But when I finally. <sighs> I fucking drank twice this month. Okay. I, but I went like almost a year without drinking. And I yeah. planned those relapses out. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to drink. The one in San Diego? Yeah. Yeah, because I opened for Laser. We had five shows. They went great. And then... Shout uh, out to San Diego. Yeah, shout out to the American Comedy Club. You guys are awesome. And Have them back soon. And I was like... But it was I, fun. I was, just, I was just getting fucking bored, dude. Because there, there was a persona that I had created along with the the boozing that doesn't coincide with the lifestyle I'm trying to live for myself now and it was just it was fun just getting back in that mode of how'd you feel the next day I felt fine all right yeah so you didn't get to the point where you're like hating yourself the next day no that that usually doesn't happen unless I go to sleep at like 8 a.m mm. but I'm I'm also allergic to alcohol like 
What the fuck? All, all, all kinds. You it's still just, do it? No, I don't. That's the whole thing. So you My play, whole point okay. is that I don't drink anymore. Except those two times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I have COVID. Um, dude, I've, you know, people ask me, am I going to go back to drinking? And not saying that I'll never have a drink again, because I do think some food is, like, paired well with drinks. Like, it does taste good, does taste great. I just don't think I'll ever be hammered again. I don't think I'll ever get super drunk anymore. I don't think any of that. I, I, I'm living in a very clear light. Even if everything doesn't work out with whatever I'm trying to do, uh, but it will. And I, I just don't see it as something that I yearn for anymore. I used to yearn for it because it's a, you're addicted. That's that's another thing. I didn't think I was addicted. I think that's what addictive personality or people who are addicted to anything say to themselves like i can quit whenever i want i could just stop it and then one day i just did and i didn't even honestly i believed that i was gonna do it but there was parts of me that didn't believe in it either like can you can you and i think that's kept me from drinking and i think that's and then like everything got better bro like comedy is so much better now i feel like i'm performing at a higher level even when i do bomb uh, it doesn't hit me as hard than when I drank because I'd give myself a lot of shit. Dude, I'm worse at comedy sober. Are you? I need to be like a little bit higher or a little mushrooms or something. Yeah, no, I don't need any of it now. That's I not good. I need to like train myself out of that. But then every time when it's like time to perform and I'm sober, I'm like, dude, I don't want to fuck this thing up. So then I'll. I'll yeah, yeah. I give myself a little slap to the face before I but get on stage. But then sometimes I'll go and I'll be like, oh, I have no time to get high. I'm going to go do this sober. And then it doesn't go very well. Maybe. So there's still, there's still, I think that's the biggest battle with sobriety is just knowing that I am better under the influence. Mm. And that's, that's I used like, to think that all my friends, they hate to admit it. And I, I, sometimes I can catch him in admitting it, but I don't think I'm better drink drinking. I've reviewed the tapes, you know, um, I'll be honest with you. I was uh, last month with Tim Dillon and this time I was featuring uh, I stayed up live. The first time we did stand up live, I was hosting. And then this time I was featuring. And I think on the third show, you know, I told him I haven't drank in like whatever amount of time. And he's like, it's better. It's just better. It just, he goes, you also look better. And that could, well, that yeah, could you play shouldn't, You shouldn't drink alcohol before you go on stage for sure because yeah. you need to bring some of that like fear and anxiety on stage with you because use that as fuel to make sure you're going to hit your notes. I think it's just way better. And do your performance right. Because if you go up there drunk, then, because I started out comedy drinking. Yeah, same. Who has And first year and a half, I just wasted just going up there hammered to do three minutes. And I would go up there with so much confidence from the booze that I didn't give a fuck if I bombed. Mm. And while it was kind of helpful in the sense of like training wheels to where I had bombs so much that when I started, when I stopped drinking and then I experienced bombs sober, it was, it was easier to handle. But, but being hard on yourself is part of it. Yeah. Yeah. But like I went up there with so much drunk confidence that I didn't care if I bombed but and you have to care. Yeah. You have to care. You have to care. So drinking before you go on stage is, is the worst drug you could do 100 percent. i mean you know <clears throat> now that i've you know i've worked with a couple of comics i would say the younger comics drink more the younger headliners i've worked out with they 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 drink like hard hardcore and that could just be that they're at that age that they could handle both but the older comics i want to say take maybe a drink if not none yeah i didn't get a hangover till i was 25 oh uh, not damn. once I didn't start drinking until I was about, 25. yeah, like 19. Yeah, and another thing about going sober, too, is the... Well, yeah, I, I was I was in the middle of saying this earlier, how at first I was like, I, talking to women is, like, impossible. Because mm -hmm. they're all fucking... They're so boring. <laughs> the and prettier, dumb. the more I'm not, boring. No, I'm not saying all women are boring and dumb. Just the ones I've met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. It's, it's, a, it's a problem, honestly. It's a big problem. And I think that women should get on top of it. I think women should be like, you know what? I should learn some tactics on how to be more interesting. And because we had to do that. 100%. We had to do that. Well, that's, that's why men are more interesting is because we, we have had faced to be. so much rejection that we have to constantly look in the mirror and be like, what the fuck am I doing We got to put on a show. That's why like Mark Norman has a joke about Bumble, how they... They put it on the girl, and he's like, all right, cool. I liked you. Now you know. Now you have to start up a conversation with me. You got to be the one interesting. And he goes, a lot of women would just be like, hey, 
He goes, what? Hey, this is your opening line to me? Like, no, hit me with something good. That's why I don't even I don't even approach women anymore. Like, I, I see a beautiful woman. I'm like, God damn. But then I'm like, dude, but do I want to start a conversation here? Do I want to get locked into a, a mm. shitty conversation? Or she's just like, what does that mean? Or like, that sounds stupid. Or like, all that. I, I don't know. No, I agree. There's, there, there's a lot of different paths that it could go down that are just not fun. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm hanging out with my boys and stuff. Like, I'd rather just hang out with my friends. Yeah, I mean, this goes to like the- Because alcohol makes it harder to tolerate that, sh or easier to tolerate that shit. When I'm drunk, I can talk to anyone. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can matter. listen to some boring- Doug Sam has a joke about this too. It's like this, you, you, you just take whatever boring, mundane shit I was doing and pour booze on it. And uh, you know, he's like talking to some guy at an airport bar about, it. oh, this dog's named Patriot because I got him after 9-11. He's like, five drinks in, that guy's hilarious. <laughs> it's true. If you weren't, then it wouldn't be as interesting. And that, that's the thing. I want to be around interesting people- whether, you know, while I'm not inebriated, you know, I want to be, uh, you know, surround myself with those people. I enjoy the people I surround myself with now. I truly do. And if I don't, I, I just, they get lesser time with me. You know, it's, they're honestly on a, on a show in my life and hosts get 10 minutes <laughs> and features get 20, 30 and the headliner will get the hour with me. Like there are people, I treat them just as such. Like I can only stomach so much. And it's not because they're horrible people. It's because. It's just that much of my attention span for them. Yeah, maybe I'm an asshole. That could maybe I'm an asshole because I, there's yeah, like often times where I find myself getting very angry with people that aren't doing anything rude or disrespectful. They're just being stupid. Mm. They're just not under. Well, maybe they're not even being stupid. Maybe I'm being stupid and I'm just not articulating clearly and they're just not understanding what I'm trying to say. And that makes me so fucking mad. I think we so just had a breakthrough. Maybe that's me being an asshole. Sure. But do I want to change my whole persona and like work on myself so I don't get mad at people? Or do I just want to say, fuck those people? What's easier? I have the control and the ability to filter who go comes in mm -hmm. my life. I don't need to ever be around people that I don't like. So, yeah, I mean, unless you're in the show business, that's the thing, dude. And, and the like, well, okay, that's a like, good point. Like I, I happen to like everyone. Likeability is so. First of all, I don't know if you could teach it or whatever. I'm not saying that I'm a likable person, but I think controlling those feelings of not letting things bother you is such a superpower, man. I used to let everything bother me, and I think just being like this person can't help themselves. I feel bad for them. I had a and breakthrough just, moment one night when I had a, a cleaning lady from this terrible company i they sent, you they sent over i think it was dazzle cleaning yep but um they allegedly sent over they sent over a cleaning lady she knocks on the door i open the door and she is a retarded woman okay like like full-on fully developmentally disabled uh, whatever you want to call it yeah, yeah i yeah. open the door pablo my dog runs up and she just goes animal <laughs> and and I'm just sitting there like, oh. And then she like she's talking like a retarded person. She's like, oh, oh but, 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 you you want me to clean here? And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh shit. She ended up leaving a wet mop sitting on my couch. And oh, that's not good. I, I didn't even think about it. I just I literally went up to it and I was like, oh, that's not where that goes. And I put it down. And and then I found my I realized none of the what she was doing was upsetting me. She was being a complete retard and she was actually retarded. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't getting mad because she was actually retarded. Yeah, compassion. So I was like, okay, it's it's fine. And after that day, I was like, okay, I need to just deal with everyone like this. Like they're all I retarded. I need to just treat everyone like they're retarded. That's not a bad way of going. And and that <laughs> and that's helped me out a lot. <coughs> mm. Like when when people do that, like kind of like flirty, like teasing stuff, like mm -hmm. oh well, you're stupid, and nah, nah, nah. that usually is like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like why would you do that? Mm. I don't do that. That's why I don't like, I don't do that. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, it's a, I, I never want to like talk down on people. I had to learn that like some people are just in certain ways and I can't control it. I can speak up to it and I like my new thing now. Well, not a new thing. I've always been done this, but to articulate why what they're doing doesn't make sense. Yeah, and a, being calm, really. Like that's something that I've, being I've, calm wor is I've the worked biggest hard. I've worked hard on doing it. And just being like, do you understand why? You know, and then have them answer it and almost they be like, won't. they never understand. I've, I've done it and I've been pretty successful. I don't know. People let me talk sometimes and I'm like, 
Okay? But I'll just I'll just be also since I'm not always mad, I'm not. When I do get mad, I feel like people respect it a little bit more. Cause they're just like Eric doesn't get mad. Yeah, you know, he doesn't get mad. So when I do get mad, I, you know, even my friends who are much bigger. Like when Gary gets mad, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, well he was already mad. No, no, he's <laughs> just he woke up that way. You know, he just screams at all lengths and you know, really high. I mean, it is the best wake up if you needed to wake up, like for an alarm at six a.m. You would want Gary to just scream, and it would be it will get you right up, ready to go, whatever. And you'll be irritated, but like in a good way. You have coffee and you'll get over it. But with me, I've learned that. Same thing, like, if you treat every girl great, you know, what does it really mean if you're always like that? Do you know what I mean? So if I'm always angry, what does it mean? Then I get really angry, and it's just like, oh, this is just what he does. He's just always angry. And I've learned that with people that see me more than once or twice or several times or weekly, daily, whatever, they'll understand he's not typically like this, so I'm going to listen. That's what I've learned with me. People will listen to me. If I get really upset... It's like, come on, man. Like, like, uh, why would you do that? Why would you do that? People are like, e e they could disagree with me still, and they could just be like, all right, well, let me I, figure it out. I can never out. really get upset because I'm always like the biggest guy in the room. So if I start freaking out, then I'm just a psycho. Or yeah, asshole, it's domestic so violence. I, I got I to gotta like keep it under wraps. But another thing about not drinking is the fact that you're not dating girls that drink too. Yeah, no, I mean... That, that's been a huge bonus for me. Is that That's what I was trying to get to, is how it, it helped my dating life. Because I'm not ever around drunk women. That's and good. drunk women are perhaps the worst people on earth. Yeah, because they think it's it's a they, it, they're it's like a, it's an okay to do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. And they'll like get they'll like smack you and like poke you in mm -hmm. the eye and like all this shit and it's And they'll be like, What's the big deal? And, and they like start shit and well, drunk people in general. Yeah, not, no, this is not just a woman. But because thing. here's the thing, sometimes I, 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 I don't sometimes get. Sometimes when when guys are drunk around me and they'll start touching me and stuff, I'll be like, dude, get, fucking get off. Yeah, me. I've chill. had to check some people. <clears throat> I don't like I don't like being touched. I've realized I, I never really thought about it because when I was drinking, I didn't care. I'd like whatever. Yeah, yeah. Me, me and a buddy got our arm around each other, like smacking each other on the shoulder and stuff, and it's like that's fine when you're drinking, but it, it's it's really it's uh, annoying, uh, unnerving when when you're sober. It's like I don't want to be touched. Oh yeah, I noticed not, that too not, since being sober. Not being around drunk bitches has like I I don't have fucking drama in my life at all. Yeah, and I, and, I, and, and I I would if I was drinking. I think girls. And if I was around, drunk I think women chicks. who drink they feel like it gives them the license to be reckless. And annoying and bitchy, and then go. Why are you so upset? Yeah, yeah. And then you explain why, and then they don't hear you. Like, I then, just don't get it. I think that's where the problem is. Where because the, the next day they'll just, they'll just be like, "Dude, I was so sorry. I, I was drunk or whatever." And it's like that can only be an excuse so many times. To me, kind of none now. If and, you're sorry for how drunk you were, stop getting drunk, or you're not sorry. Si that's how apologies work. Hundred percent. That's why I never apologize. That's right. You never said sorry to me for that thing you did. I've never done anything wrong to you. You didn't pick me up from the airport. Dude, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> you see, this guy gets mad for everything. He wants to hit me. Um, <laughs> no, dude, but look, as much as I like to say women are shit or whatever, it, it, I think it's just more of a generalization of what I see now every day. Even my own common friends, they'll they'll do. I saw I, I was right next. I was in the airport, dude. Actually, I forgot to, to talk about this airport. At what two in the afternoon, and there's these two women talking, and they're just saying that guy looks like a player. That guy is a player. They're scrolling their phone and like, ah, uh, yeah, I don't do this cheating shit. And then their next conversation was how they're like handling three or four dudes. Oh my, I was at his house, and then Edward started calling me, and then he was like, "Who's calling you?" And I had to like make up a lie, and I'm like, "You are what you hate. You you just say you give it a pass because it's you." That's the reason why. And the thing is, like, was, the more you do that, you're going to be lonely. You're going to be a single mom. You're going to have these problems. And then you're going to be undesirable in the dating marketplace. And it's going to be no one's fucking fault but you and Cardi B. Also, I will say guys do the same shit. 100%. Where they're like, look at this fucking whore. Anyways, I got to call these other whores. Yeah. But men are allowed to do that. 100%. Because the more women men interact with the more we can elevate our ability to communicate and knowledge of how to interact with a woman because it's learned. It's, they're weird. They're a different creature. 
the more the more experience men have with women, the better it is for the man to treat the next woman 100%, better. Yeah. But the more dicks, every dick dents a woman's soul. Hundred percent. Like every, no one can even disagree with me on this. Any woman alive, or any woman watching this right now, is probably on some level upset about some dick. Yeah. And the thing is, like, if you're with a girl, if you ever settle down with a girl, the less amount of partner she's had, statistically, is better for the relationship in general. And the more that you've had, it's statistically better for the relationship. And I'll try, you know, I had this conversation in the last episode with Tyler. But the math doesn't add up having a society where men bang everything and then women are not supposed to bang anyone. It's, just, know, it's just not possible. But it's it, it makes sense because... You know, not to like steal this quote from I forget which podcast. Oh, fuck, I forget. But it was like she was like, "Why can't women have as much partners as guys?" It's like, is it easy for a woman to have sex? Yes. Is it more difficult for a man to have sex? Well, some guys. No, you're talking about a very small percentage of men who have access to all these women. I'm talking about generally all men, right? It's harder. What do we reward people on? Things that are difficult or things that are easy? Things that are difficult. That's why it's more difficult. I don't care who you are, dude. You could be the hottest dude of all time. You're still not going to be have access to more women than some girl who's a five or a six that's horny. She's going to have the abundance of all these men, and you'll still have whatever, 50, 100, 150. She'll have millions that will be willing to do it. Yeah, you still got to, like, you know, know how to talk to them and be able to afford dinner and stuff. That's and what I'm saying. Women don't have to worry about have anything. To do women can be like, hey, what's your name? Do you want to have sex? You want to fuck? Okay. Those, yes. You. There's no a situation where a man goes up to a girl and goes, hey, what's up? What are you doing? Do you want to have sex? And maybe that can happen, but I'm going to tell you, it's most of the time not going to happen like that. And it's not because it's sex is whatever. It's just, it is what it is. This is the biology of people. And yes, it is more difficult for a man to get a girl to have sex with than it is for a woman to get a guy to have sex with no one no there's no stat that you can provide we could go literally go live stream and i can find a girl who's okay and a guy who's very hot and we'll go have him ask the opposite sex if they want to have sex and i guess what the hot guy maybe will have three or four girls saying yes and that girl's gonna have about 95 guys say yes that'd be a fun little six street Man yeah. on the street. Thing. Yeah. And we can go to this clip. Remember when we said this? But um, my, where are we at on time? Because Gary. I don't remember when we started, but it's 525. I think it was like an hour. <sighs> we got to wrap up. Actually, I just got a call. I got to return right now. But uh, Eli, let them know where they can follow you. Follow me on Octavius Thunder on everything and uh, Brody Lowballer on Spotify. That's right. Go ahead and check out his raps. Guys, this has been the Eric Bernal Show from Austin, Texas. And as always, go fuck yourself. All right. Bye. By the AZ, it's SVO. Jokes aside, the realest when you hear it coming from the Eric Bernal.